Hey people, it's Ed Budd here, your midsole man. I've had the pleasure to test out loads of running shoes across 2023 so far, so I've put together for you today a video with my top five best of in 2023. Thanks for joining me on the channel, it's always appreciated. Do hit that subscribe button and make sure you give this video a thumbs up like. It really helps out, you know it makes sense. Today I've put together my top five absolute must-haves for this year. Kind of like the best stuff I've reviewed over the last few months on the channel. I had loads to consider in this video. We've had super trainers from the likes of Saucony with that Kimvara Pro. The cushion stacks of shoes like the Nimbus 25 and the Keanu 30. And some awesome offerings from Adidas and and Nike as well as some new upcoming brands. So it's been quite tough to put it all together but what I've tried to look at here is which shoes have given me the most enjoyment, which ones really work best for me. Typically when I do some reviews I always try and think of other runners, you know, different builds, different paces, that type of thing. But today it's pretty much just for me. I'm indulging a little bit today and you know I think that I deserve it. So first off, a few that didn't quite make the top five, just missed out on those top spots. The Puma Magnify Nitro 2 is a really great update to this line and I hope they stick with it. A really nice upper and a slightly wider midsole base as well. So if you've struggled perhaps with the toe box area in any Puma shoes, give this one a whirl. Lots of cushion and it's a nice price as well. It's not gonna break any banks. Just wish they could shave a few more grams of weight off this one. Another great daily shoe here, the Pegasus 40 from Nike. I've actually been using this for a lot of musical performances recently where I've been having to stand on my feet for like two or three hours. Really good as well for loading and unloading the gear. Just when you want some daily sort of cushion that isn't too overblown, saves the legs and it does double as a nice easy sort of daily shoe too. I just wish again that it was a little bit lighter, something closer to what we had in the Pegasus 39. Really love the grip on the Peg 40 though. Love those waffle treads. I've been enjoying the A6 Gel Nimbus 25. I think that model for me just about over the Kayano feels a little bit more natural to me on foot. It's got a wonderful firm but fair cushion for those easier paced efforts. A little bit more breathable I guess as well over the Kayano. I just wish again that it was just a little bit lighter. A lot of these shoes coming in around about 350 grams of my size which is quite considerable really. I'm a light guy. If I weighed a bit more I don't think it would matter but it does matter to me. The Vaporfly 3. It was a great shoe, very, very nimble. Actually had some really decent durability as well, over 100 miles. But I'm relegating it to just outside the top five due to the issues I have with the upper. It's just far, far too baggy and it didn't give me that nice, concise race feel that I want over the top of the foot. Also just outside the top five is the Adios 8. Love the shoe, I just find it a little bit too tough to take out on some more frequent runs due to the proximity of those torsion rods which appear just underneath the outsole rubber. They kind of make direct contact with that rubber and it does feel like the shoes are a little bit tougher I suppose than it needs to be. Aside from that, it's an absolute banger. So it just misses out on the top five. And it is one of the most breathable shoes you're ever gonna find. Okay, time for the top five now. In at number five, gotta be the Saucony Triumph 21. Now, this one's got a really wonderful balance between sort of weight and cushion and versatility. The fit's really on point in this Saucony model and that Power Run Plus midsole is fantastic, as well as being really durable too. I think those pellet-based midsoles sometimes can be a little bit fragile. They can tear quite easily. I've not had any of those issues though with this implementation in the Triumph 21. Also, they've come up trumps with the outsole rubber, a little bit more durable, a little bit more coverage here in this version. It's got like a workhorse type shoe really it just does lots of things very very well it's always nice to have a shoe in the rotation with a quite nice wide extended use case you can use it for steady pace runs and some of those longer efforts if needed to really forgiving on foot and a lot of the viewers have suggested that the upper updates that we've got here in the triumph 21 over the 20 are a real boon so really cool to include it in the top five it's certainly worthy of a place Probably one of the big surprise shoes actually in terms of how good it is so far in 2023. I'm keen to get some more miles into this one to unlock the secrets of the Triumph. At position four, it's the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. Again, this is a shoe of extreme versatility to me. It's so ridiculously light, brilliant at any pace and effort level too. Even with some beat up legs when I've gone out in these shoes, 
you still manage to actually get something out of the run. I've spotted some awesome deals as well on the DV8 Nitro Elite 2 recently over here in the UK. I think it's an even better model if you can pick it up on discount, just even better value. Puma Grip, always pretty decent in terms of the durability. And of all the Puma shoes, really, I found this one in terms of fit is really on point. It's probably the standout shoe. I found that the midsole material breaks in very quickly. It's good out the box and improves a little bit as you put some more miles in. And I think it's great territory for perhaps those who haven't experienced a carbon plate or running one yet it isn't so overtly in your face it has a ride that's just nice and accommodating for a wide range of runners i think in a day and age where people are very short of money you know times are pretty tough the puma is one that you can use on a more frequent basis you can use it often and not sort of worry too much about durability and longevity this stuff's just not going to bottom out as quickly as some of those other very squashy compressive foams it is a little bit more stable and slightly firmer than the original version of the deviate nitro elite but personally, I think that's a real improvement. It's a positive step forward. Just makes it a little bit more usable to a wider range of folks. So great grip on the outsole and a nice simple lacing system as well. It's just easy to achieve a good lockdown. This has been one of my favorite shoes to run in so far in 2023. So at number four, it's the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 2. At three, it's got to be the Adi Zero Boston 12 from Adidas, a shoe that I've been really impressed with over the last few weeks. It's really delivered on pretty much anything I've wanted to do with it. Aside from like 200 or like 400 meter repeats or something, it still delivers. Very consistent and extremely enjoyable to use. Just fun to run in. Now, the energy rods might not be as in your face, perhaps, as models like the Takumi Sen or the Adios Pro, but I think that's the general intention of the shoe. They're providing some stability and rigidity to the very soft Adidas Light Strike foam materials, and the actual combination here is a massive update on the Boston 10 and 11. I think they got the balance right here. It feels really good to me at steady paces. I did a longer run in it, where I ran about sort of seven or eight miles at a sort of steady pace and then threw in some much faster effort and it felt fantastic for that type of use. So if that's the sort of shoe you're after, then you can't go too far wrong. On foot for me, it's one of the best uppers out there. I don't really mind the lace loops that we've got here, but it's extremely breathable and that's good right now. It's very humid here in the UK. So a really top-notch model here from Adidas and one that surprised me. Perhaps a little bit more than the Triumph did. Very impressive and worthy of a top three finish for the Boston 12 in 2023. At position two, it's a shoe that I've been very lucky to test out over 2023 so far. I even got it on a really sweet discount as well, quite a bit down from the retail price. We have here the Hoka Rocket X2, my favorite race shoe of 2023 so far. It's super light and super squashy. It really propels you forward as well with that lower drop and that carbon plate placement between the mid and forefoot. It really does have that rocker action. I'm very pleased to see that the Hoka brand have switched up their use of foams in 2023. I really enjoy these around that sort of half marathon to marathon kind of speed. And it can handle easy stuff as well, perhaps some recoveries in between some reps, but it does feel like you're wasting the shoe a little bit for that sort of speed. Easily one of the highlights again and surprises for the year. I didn't think this one would sort of appeal to me quite so much as it does, but I keep reaching for it. There's such a huge improvement here in terms of the use of technology and design that it's worthy of second place a silver medal for the rocket x2 well done hoka so i'll give you a moment to just try and figure out what the top place shoe is you've probably already clocked it first place is an easy guess it's the a6 super blast now i think this shoe did actually come out in 2022 but i've reviewed it this year in 2023 so it does count it's just all the things that you want in a running shoe really great flexibility very breathable upper a superb midsole as well utilizing the flagship a6 midsole foams it's such a light and nimble shoe yeah it has such a massive wide sort of surface area for landing it just feels like a more stable invincible run and a better design or at least implementation of that idea and you don't have the huge bulk and weight issues i think there's a good 75 80 grams difference in favor of the super blast between the invincible i think the only slight dent in the armor of the super blast would perhaps be the outsole i think if you're running on some very slippery smooth wet surfaces then you might have a bit of a problem but i've not really encountered that too much so far other than that it's an absolute monster of a shoe and 
if you're able to test it out i would certainly recommend it the midsole showing no signs of letting up so far i think the flight foam turbo is really sort of bedding in a little bit it's starting to compress some more i love the way they've implemented that flight foam blast plus as well underneath that just protecting that softer foam it's kind of like a maximized pegasus turbo in some ways and like i said 60 to 80 grams lighter than the nimbus the invincible the infinity run 4 need i say more it's also worked for me on practically every type of run that i've tried with it even some repeats and intervals at very fast pace so it's certainly my shoe of 2023 so far the asic super blast will that one hold out till december time will tell let me know your shoes of 2023 viewers which are the ones that have surprised you in a good way or perhaps a bad way let's see your comments down below quick musical interlude for you i've been enjoying the fourth album from scott walker imaginatively titled scott four my favorite track on here is easily the seventh seal it sounds like something like out of a spaghetti western film wonderful acoustic guitars warm production and this fantastic kind of trumpet sound everything just creates that kind of air of open desert arid kind of feel absolutely brilliant song from scott walker I mean, all of his albums are worth checking out. Don't expect something very poppy. That's not what you're going to get here. He was a real innovator, an experimentalist, investigating different genres and different feels. Puts you into like a different atmosphere or mood all the time. Fantastic albums. Check out any of them, really. But my favourite track on Scott 4 has got to be Seventh Seal. Quick shout out to Runner. They've sent me some stuff recently. You've probably noticed my hat. I've switched it up today. They also sent me this awesome hoodie. Go and check out some of their stuff. I'll stick a link in the description of this video. Thanks for sending it over, guys. I'm really enjoying it. Thanks for tuning in, people. It's always appreciated. Hope you enjoyed my list for today. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up, like. It really helps out. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you.